Hello! In this video, we're going to break down what goes into a good pouring technique for your pour-over brew. This is part two of a series diving into the anatomy of a pour-over. In part one, we explore the effects of grind distribution, grind size, water, and ratio. So if you haven't, be sure to check out that video. Now how you pour water through the coffee is the biggest factor in getting an even extraction. We're gonna discuss this in five steps. The bloom, the pour height, number of pours, pour pattern, and the flow rate. The bloom is where we pour a little bit of water to evenly saturate and degas any carbon dioxide in the coffee. Without blooming, the water will flow unevenly through the coffee and lead to a brew that is both too acidic and too bitter. Bloom with three times the amount of coffee and water and let it sit for at least 30 seconds so that all the coffee is fully saturated. So pour height affects how much we agitate the coffee bed. More agitation means more flavor extraction. To get more agitation, we want the kettle stream to go all the way down into the coffee bed. To get the right height, keep pouring higher until just before the water starts to splash. We keep pour height consistent across brews because it's a hard variable to control. The only exception is with darker roasts where we may use a lower pour height to avoid over extraction. Splitting a brews into more pours increases agitation because the kettle stream has less distance to travel before hitting the coffee bed. But too many pours can lead to clogging and loss of heat in the brewer. We like to start with three pours and then reduce down to two if we taste bitterness or see clogging after dialing in all the other variables. The goal is to agitate the coffee bed evenly. This gives us even extraction and helps prevent channeling. Lots of patterns work here. We use the spiral pattern and start at the center. Consistent flow rate ensures consistent extraction. The easiest way to do this is to finish your pour in a specific length of time. For instance, we pour 50 milliliters in 10 seconds. Now let's bring it all together and see what the brewing process looks like end to end. We're gonna use our go-to starting recipe, a one to 15 ratio, so 15 grams of coffee to 225 milliliters of 97 degrees Celsius water and a bloom plus three pours. First thing you wanna do is wet the filter. The filter needs to stick to the walls of the brewer without any air bubbles for consistent, controlled extraction. You can do this by filling your brewer up to the brim with water. Next, you want to preheat your brewer right before you add coffee and start brewing. A hot brewer keeps the temperature of the water as close to the target temperature as possible to maximize extraction. A plastic brewer is ideal because it absorbs less heat and retains heat better than metal or ceramic. But regardless of material, preheating is a must. Starting with the bloom, we're going to form a nest shape in the coffee bed to follow the shape of the brewer. This will just help get all the coffee saturated as quickly as possible. Quickly pour 50 milliliters starting at the center. And then to finish it off, we swirl the brewer a couple of times to help with that even saturation. After 30 seconds, we start the first pour. We use the high pour height to maximize agitation and pour in a spiral pattern until we hit 110 milliliters. And with an even flow rate, we're aiming to finish the pour in about 10 seconds. When the water is just above the coffee bed, we start the next pour with the same technique to get to 170 milliliters. For the last pour, here's where we can play around with our understanding of pour height. Since we're getting close to the later parts of extraction, where we might start extracting some bitterness, we like to actually use a low pour height to finish the brew. As the water drains, we want a flat coffee bed to again help with that even extraction. Easiest way to do that is to give the slurry a stir and then a quick shake. This is a technique we learned from the coffee guru, Lance Hedrick, which also helps push fines to the size of the filter to mitigate clogging issues. And there you have it, all the key variables to ensure you have a consistent dialing in process. In the next video, we're gonna show you how to apply everything we've learned in the series to build a step-by-step -step dialing in process. Lots of the science behind our techniques is all thanks to Jonathan Gagne's work in his book, The Physics of Filter Coffee. We'll leave a link to his book in the description below. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions about brewing the perfect pour over.